One of the summer's biggest films opens in theaters tomorrow. Some of the reviews of Oppenheimer so far have used the words brilliant, staggering, and even the best film of the century. The stellar cast includes Emily Blunt, who portrays Robert Oppenheimer's wife, Kitty, and Matt Damon, who brings to life the man who led the Manhattan Project, General Leslie Groves. Joe sat down with Emily and Matt before the actor's strike began to discuss their real-life characters and the immersive experience of starring in writer-director Christopher Nolan's most ambitious film yet. You guys were all together. Yeah. Like, you know, Wes Anderson, apparently, in, in, in his movie this summer, same thing. Everybody, it's like a camp yeah, like. It is. Yeah. Talk about how, how, how that, how much fun that was, first of all, but also how it made the film so much better. I mean, we were all in the middle of the, the New Mexican te desert in this one hotel, and we were all like <laughs> in these cabins next to each other. And it was awesome. It was like summer camp because we could all have dinner together, and it was very except for low Killian. key. Except for Killian, Killian went home, eat. like ate yeah. an almond and he, had a bath. He was like, doing the. He, yeah, he, it, I've got Crohn's He doesn't have a lot thing. to lose, but whatever he had, he <laughs> lost. It was gone. He was really it was gone. He was gaunt. Yeah. incredibly disciplined, and we invited him to dinner every night, and the whole cast would go and eat, and, and he wouldn't do it. Wouldn't be there. No. Oh my God! No. no, the Tom Brady of acting. He's the Tom Brady, yes, yeah. full, full sure. send. Yeah. Now somebody who wasn't disciplined was me. Was Kitty? Oh, oh, Kitty, yeah. So Kitty in the movie, like the first half of the movie. You're holding either martinis or screaming babies. But something remarkable happens the second half. This betrayed wife becomes his fiercest defender. What a force of nature she was considering the time mm -hmm. uh, that, that she lived. I mean, she, she really was a monumental presence in his life and his intellectual um, confidant in huge ways. and. Not a natural mother. He was her. <laughs> I, think, I think that was our obvious. Take my baby, please. Please right? take this child. I don't, I'm not good at this. And, but yet I had, a, I had a lot of empathy for that. You know, there were many women who sort of went to waste at the ironing board back then. When I think she was meant for greater things and I think drove herself insane. Like that isolation and loneliness of living in Los Alamos with nothing else to do but to drink and have children. It's also like living in the same, we live in the same apartment building and uh, it's really nothing how Emily... Does she drive drinking. you to drink? <laughs> it's how Emily parents and... <laughs> yeah. Oh, does she bring her it kids down here? Yeah, like a screaming a, child and a martini. And a martini and like, exactly. right, do you want to hang out? Like, yeah. <laughs> Kitty had a complex relationship, but also the general had a really complex relationship with Oppenheimer where Oppenheimer, obviously, he loved the community of scientists. Afterwards, he wanted cooperation, international cooperation. But the general, obviously, needed to be all about compartmentalization. Well, that was, yeah, there's just this natural tension, right, between, uh, you know, the, the, the military. I'm the general running the project and, and the scientists because, you know, we're obsessed with compartmentalization and need to know. And obviously, you don't want this stuff getting out. We're worried about spies. We're worried about Russia. And uh, the scientists take an, the absolute opposite approach, which is they're trying to find the truth, right? They're trying right. to get to the answer, and the way you do that is you share information. Yeah. And so there was this natural tension between the military and, and the scientists. And, uh, you know, Groves, I think, felt like he was hurting cats half the time, like he just trying to, trying to keep everything where it needed to be. And just the logistical undertaking of making this happen uh, was really amazing. And yet they figured out. They figured out. It's kind of like a buddy movie if the buddy movie was moving towards an atomic right. bomb. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. Near zero. What do you want from theory alone? Zero would be nice. They figured out how to respect each other. I think they how genuinely liked each other. Appreciate each yeah. other yeah. and like each other. Yeah, yeah. They, they they did, and and I think you know Groves was a really sharp guy. Also, he went to MIT. He was a very you know he he wouldn't mind playing the dolt in front of the scientists, but he knew what was going on and he understood the science and he and so uh, I think you know he obviously you know had a deep respect for for Oppenheimer's intellect yeah. and um, and really it was a, it was a, it was a masterful call putting him in charge of the project. Let's talk about the cast. This was like a How the West Was One cast. <laughs> like I said, you're holding a martini and a baby for half the movie. 
I mean, Rami Malek, I don't know if Christopher Nolan knew this or not, but he won an Academy Award. He held a clipboard for like two hours. Yeah, yeah. Before delivering that extraordinary yeah. scene and before you delivered your extraordinary scenes. Talk about it was like an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. The extraordinary actors that were Well, all I think just aligned. the willingness of everybody to show up and be a part of this type of excellence. It's what Chris invites, it's what he's known for and I think all of us would have shown up to do a scene. But his, his level of uh, attention to detail is just really, it's fun to be around. It's, it's you know, yeah. um, he's just so uh, particular about everything and the research, the amount of work that he has gone into, um, you know, the script itself was, I, I read it, I was like, this is one of the best things I've ever read in my life. And it's also very dense, it's very morally complex, kind of like a thriller. Yes, yeah, so yeah. he sort of thriller. Trojan horses these other genres into this biopic, and it doesn't feel like a biopic. It's it's a full immersive experience, and I think it's Killian's ability to play the duality of the character and the fact that his intention was like dancing between raindrops at the end as this thing became bigger than him and he lost control over you know what happens to it what happens to this creation now he loses power over that and and you do you feel for him because you've seen the trauma of living with a brain like that you've watched it talking about the complexities of living with that man there's a moment where he, he says when they're asking you I really want Kitty to testify for you he goes Kitty and I are grown-ups we've walked through fire together I mean Again, a very complex relationship you usually don't see mm -hmm. in most And movies. his belief in her when everyone else is sort of just seeing the deterioration, you know, is they had this belief in each other. I mean, she thought he was just remarkable. I think he thought she was too in many ways. I just think other people's perception of her was at a different point. Ow. Tomorrow on Morning Joe, see Joe sit downs with Killian Murphy, who plays Oppenheimer, and Robert Downey Jr., who portrays Louis Strauss, the antagonist to Oppenheimer in the film. Oppenheimer hits theaters nationwide tomorrow. And, amazing and, interviews. Uh, well, I mean, an, an amazing movie, amazing acting, uh, amazing writing by Christopher Nolan, amazing directing by Christopher Nolan, and again, the New York Times. I mean, they get it right. They call this staggering mm. uh, and, and and just talks about Christopher Nolan's remarkable achievement uh, it really was it really and was also something. an incredible partnership with his wife in putting oh. together this oh, I, I mean, mean I, I, Emma Thomas what a team. I, again the fact like we we talked about with him yesterday the fact that he comes up like at Momento. Okay, listen, here's the deal. Everything's going to be going backwards. I want you to... It, it, is, uh, it is a challenge for everybody here. Uh, and, yeah, but what a remarkable team and a real, a real family affair uh, with the Nolans. We'll be right back with more Morning Joe.